But uh, one thing I could tell you that's um, also sticks in my head about my career was, uh, you know, as I had this whole idea about what I wanted to do in the Navy and so forth. And now all of a sudden I'm going into a service, you know, I can't follow my brother Greg anymore. And uh, in fact, it was my mother's term that she said to me that going into the wrong recruiting office was probably the best thing that ever happened to me because I had walked in my brother's footsteps long enough and it was time for me to walk in my own. So, uh, so as I was uh, in boot camp, uh, two weeks, uh, two weeks in boot camp. You know, boot camp was uh, ten weeks back then. I'm in my second week of boot camp. That I make this bold, ridiculous proclamation that I wanted to become the master chief petty officer of the Coast Guard. Well, after I learned what that rank was, and what happened was there was a big giant picture of the master chief petty officer of the Coast Guard that was hanging in the barracks. I mean, it looked like, you know, this guy must be God. You know, spotlights on him and, you know, you know, it was a big, giant picture. So it was kind of a mystery because we would look at him and, you know, we'd say, oh, all right, who's this guy? And uh, and his rank looked very different because a a regular Master Chief has two stars uh, on his on his uh, on his rank. Well, this guy had three stars. And I immediately go to my book because the Navy ranks are the same as the Coast Guard ranks. And I didn't know anything about a rank with a, with a Master Chief with three stars. At least it looked like a Master Chief, but I wasn't sure. So I pull out the book. I look in it, and I can't find the rank. And this is why, partly because the rank was still fairly new. I mean, this was 1972. And as I said to you, the Coast Guard didn't start taking the Master Chief positions until a master chief of the Coast Guard positions until 1969. So my book was probably printed before the master chief of the Coast Guard position came out. So because I see this book, I uh, and I see I don't see the rank. I go to my drill instructor, which we call our company commanders, and I innocently ask. Uh, there's this picture of well, I think he's a master chief, but he's got three stars. Who is he? And, uh, you know, and if you think about from looking at TV or so forth about people who go through basic training or boot camp and so forth, you know, that, you know, your drill instructor uh, isn't really the nicest person that, that that allows you to talk to them like that. So so needless to say, I, I, I got a very uh, snide barking response back uh, in my face, probably about maybe about an inch. And he gets into my face and he says, that's the Master Chief Petty Officer of the Coast Guard. And I said, oh, right. You know, so uh, so I ask, well, what does he do? And my, my drill instructor says, he tells the Commandant what to do. So I thought that was the coolest job in the Coast Guard. So guess what Seaman Recruit Patton wanted to do? He wanted to be Master Chief Petty Officer of the Coast Guard. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. And I... I, uh, I I didn't tell people this right away until in our seventh week of boot camp. This is when they actually sat you down and says, because they figured you're going to graduate, now we know what kind of uh, scores you have. We could talk to you about what kind of specialty you can go into and so forth. So they're going over these schools and specialties with me. And Seaman Recruit Patton asked another innocent question. What school do I go to to become the Master Chief Petty Officer of the Coast Guard? Well, my career counselor thought I was being a smart ass, and he tells my company commander, who thought I was being a smart ass, and he marches me out to the middle of the parade field and makes me do 50 push-ups. Now, this is, uh, this is like late July, early August, so in Cape May, New Jersey, which is pretty hot at that time, so getting down doing 50 push-ups was uh, was was, it, it was easy in the sense that I was conditioned to do it because of yep. seven weeks of boot camp. That wasn't bad, but it's like 90 something degrees out there when I'm doing this. And I did my push ups, snapped back to attention when I got done. And my uh, company commander gets into my face and says, The day you become the Master Chief Petty Officer of the Coast Guard, that's the day I'll walk on clouds. Well, he was so right because he died two years before I became Master Chief. <laughs> Too funny. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. 
That was my that was my goal in yep. boot camp that I want to be master chief of the Coast Guard. Now, it's not that easy. You just can't proclaim you're going to do it and then just kind of work your way through the system and then we all of a sudden when the time comes, okay, hey, I asked to become master chief of the Coast Guard. I'm in. It's it's a lot more than that. It's about your career, about things and what you do. And and as I started getting people who who, who took me seriously and mentored me. And, uh, and and that's what started me on a lot of other roads in the course of my career, particularly with going to school. I mean, I, I went off, I started off in my specialty in, in communications. And uh, and then that kind of rolled into me doing um, uh, personnel and training. I got involved with doing training. I, I, I was going to school on my own. I, I earned my bachelor's degree on my own, I earned my master's degree on my own, you know, and uh, so all these things were all working to my favor, but because I was driven, not just by a goal, a goal that in reality, uh, chances of becoming Master Chief Petty Officer of the Coast Guard is one in 362. Mm-hmm. That's how many other Master Chiefs that are considered for that position. Right. Uh, so you got to look at what your career is and what the things of what you what you want to do. So uh, so one of the things that happened for me in the course of my career was um, being noticed and being noticed in terms of the jobs that I was doing. And I was on recruiting duty in Chicago uh, some years later, and um, and I got very very involved with uh, working with uh, the inner city youth of Chicago. And part of the reason why I did that was uh, when Actually, I didn't want to go on recruiting duty. I was sort of directed on recruiting duty because the Coast Guard began to get very serious with uh, minority recruiting, with getting more minorities into the Coast Guard. And when they looked around, they realized that uh, out of some 250 or so recruiters, uh, they only had like a dozen uh, African-American recruiters, and that was it. So I was a select and direct. I was having fun. I was stationed at a... At, uh, at an air station. In fact, I was stationed in my hometown in Detroit uh, at Coast Guard Air Station Detroit, and I was uh, doing well and enjoying the job and you know, getting involved with rescue cases and stuff like that and come to work one morning, and, and my chief says, you're going on recruiting duty. I said, well, I never asked to go on recruiting duty. He said, well, we know that, but Coast Guard sending you on recruiting duty, and they shipped me off to Chicago. So as I was there, I, uh, I got involved with, uh, with working with uh, inner city youth programs, partly because of the fact that, uh, I, I mean, I was at a, in a losing case because I'm here I am recruiting in the south side of Chicago where the um, the uh, high school dropout rate was higher than the high school graduation rate. It, wow. This was wow. late. And it, it was. It was, I think there was like a, a, a 55 to 60 percent dropout rate, you know. So, this is my pool of candidates that I have to work on to try to get into the Coast Guard. Uh, uh, and uh, and I was having trouble, obviously. Uh, so uh, Loyola University in Chicago was was uh, had set up a program where they were working with uh, with with youth in the inner city to help them on their on their uh, their scores to be able to graduate from high school. So I got involved with it, and then that led me into working on a master's program at, at Loyola uh, on my own. And in fact, the Coast Guard kind of let me off a lot of times, too, because the benefit that came out of that was a lot of these people that were in this program, uh, I ended up getting them to join the Coast Guard. So they saw a big benefit out of that. And it made the Coast Guard look really good to see their recruiter was out there doing things in the community and so forth. Right, so right. that worked out pretty well. So it, it got me noticed to the point of where the um, – I was uh, 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 at an event. Actually, I drove an admiral to an event. Uh, he was from Cleveland, and he flew into Chicago to go attend an event. And uh, my boss, who was head of recruiting, uh, was in the car with us, and he proudly told the admiral that uh, uh, Petty Officer Patton is working on his master's degree. And the admiral says, really? And I said, yes, sir. So the admiral says, "Well, uh, you're going to you're going to become an officer. You're going to officer candidate school." And I said, "No, sir." He says, "Well, why not?" And I told him. And I, at this time, I had uh, this was 1978, 78 or 79, at the time. And I told him, "I want to be master chief of the Coast Guard." 
And uh, uh, he got quiet and never said a word after that. So my uh, my boss, the chief, uh, told me after, look, I believe in you. A lot of people believe you, but there are some people that don't. And I think that Admiral thinks you were being a smart ass. So <laughs> don't, don't tell people that. You know, just tell them something. Just don't tell them that. Well, it's uh, it's okay. a unique route. It's it is this it notion is. that you didn't even consider going into the sort of the officer program um, is very unique. Exactly. And, and most people, they go in, they have a goal if if they enlist that eventually they want to attain an officer's rank. And um, exactly, exactly. So you know, and and why? Yeah, and, and why wouldn't I? Because at the same time, the Coast Guard was dying for. African American officers too, so I'm right. you know I mean, that was a good catch, no matter how you slice it. So I mean I understood that. I mean you know I got it. But uh, so anyway, let's fast forward a few years after that. Uh, I get transferred, come off recruiting duty, and I get transferred to Cleveland, uh, Ohio, which is the uh, Great Lakes uh, Regional Headquarters, uh, the district office there. And uh, and I wasn't there longer than nine, maybe ten months at the most, and. Uh, I come into I come into work one morning. I was working in the personnel office, and um, the uh, my my commander calls me into his office, and he says, uh, "Patton, uh, have a seat at my desk." And that's, at this time, I was a I was a first class petty officer at the time, which is uh, pay grade E six. Okay. And uh, I okay, you know, he says, "Well, have a seat at my desk." You know, <laughs> he says, "You're going to get a phone call." From a uh, from somebody in headquarters that wants to talk to you, and I uh, wow, somebody from headquarters wants to talk to me. Who could that be? You know, and he said, "Oh, you'll find out." <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I see this. phone rings. He says, "That's for you." Answer it. So I answer it, and the guy on the other end of the phone is the commandant of the Coast Guard. Wow, wow. This this guy who's a commandant of the Coast Guard, he was that admiral that I had met a few years ago. And back then he was the, he was the Great Lakes District Commander. Okay. Uh, he became the Commandant of the Coast Guard. So he says, are you the Patton I met in Chicago a few years ago? And I said, yes, sir. He said, well, did you ever get your master's degree? I says, yes, sir. He said, oh, good. He says, well, you still want to be Master Chief of the Coast Guard someday? And I says, yes, sir. He said, well, good. He says, uh, well, then I got a job for you that I think that might help you. And a job, he says, yeah. He says, uh, we're looking at changing our our enlisted performance evaluation system as well as the officer performance evaluation system. And we're going to select two people, one for the officer system and one for the enlisted system, and send you to school to work on your doctorate. And your dissertation is the development of the evaluation system. I said, wow. He says, well, are you interested? I said, yes, sir. So uh, <laughs> blew me to Washington, and I had the interview, and then uh, then I got accepted into American University, where uh, where I worked on my doctorate, and uh, and of course uh, uh, the results of that was developing the uh, uh, the enlisted performance evaluation system, which is still in use today. It's been over thirty years since that happened. It's wow. still in use today. The they picked the right and, guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess. So. So you know, this is one of those things. Like you know, when you, you if you if you work with good people and good people mentor you, uh, you will excel. Mm.